I remember my sophomore year of high school was one in which I really wanted the perks of making the basketball team. Uh, for one, I, I loved basketball. I, I also wanted the recognition of making the team. What I didn't fully realize in my quest uh, for making the team were all of the sacrifices that were going to have to be made. During tryouts, I was going to have to run profusely, um, even to the point of exhaustion. I was going to have to commit to practice almost every single night of the week. I was going to have to commit to wearing dress clothes to school on game days, which I did not like. And I was going to have to commit to long bus rides. Now, if I could have had the perks of being on the basketball team without all of the sacrifices that came with it, I surely would have opted for that. That's exactly what's going on in our passage today. As we look at Mark 8, uh, the book takes a shift as Jesus's identity as the Christ is revealed. But we are going to discover that while Peter wanted the perks of being with Jesus, he didn't want the sacrifices that entailed being with Jesus. So I'm going to read from Mark 8, 31 through 33. He, that being Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Now, up to this point in the book of Mark, we have not heard about Jesus' suffering and, and death. But immediately before this passage, we read that Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And so immediately upon that confession, Jesus begins to teach about his suffering and death on our behalf. Now, Peter wasn't having it. He wasn't going for it. Uh, Peter wanted to be on the team without the sacrifices that came with it. You see, when Peter's version uh, of Jesus collided with the real Jesus, there was a crash of sorts. When Peter's version of Jesus didn't match the real version of Jesus, he went so far as to rebuke Jesus. Now, do we at times attempt to follow a Jesus of our own making rather than the Jesus we read about in the Bible? If we do, inevitably there will be a crash coming. Uh, Jesus has some strong words for Peter. Jesus actually looks at Peter and says for Satan to get behind him. Anything that was going to stand in the way of his going to the cross was of Satan. Peter wanted a Jesus of his own making, one that met his expectations and one that did not require any sort of sacrifice. But in the case with Peter, as in the case with us, the Jesus we want isn't always the Jesus we need. We need a Jesus who would challenge us, who will not acquiesce to every whim, and who will call us to pick up our cross at times. And so I want to leave you with this question to ponder. Which area of your life are you currently attempting to make the real Jesus fit your mold of what you think he should be? I want to encourage you that the Jesus you really want is the same one you will find in the pages of the Bible.